Welcome to not only a brand new day, September 1, but a brand new month. Oh yes, when I get finished here, I will take my calendar and take that page of August, flip it over, and August is gone. Okay, let it go, y'all. Let it go. You're looking at a clean new page, a new month. Hasn't been written on with your life yet, but we are writing on September 1 that here we are in front of the Lord, starting our day right. First thing with him. Isn't it magnificent? Miss Kathy and Mel and Connie and Yolinda and all of you who arrive. I have a nice little song I'd like to sing while everybody else is showing up. And I have the music in my hands because I don't know it really well. But it, it has some beautiful words to it. Good morning, Miss Joy. <clears throat> and I thought perhaps you would all enjoy this one. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, a radiant king of light. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around Miss Sharon and Luann. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister His grace. No work too hard for him in faith receive from him be still for the power of the lord is moving in this place be still for the glory of the lord is shining all around. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. And he's there with you, isn't he? Isn't that, isn't that a precious song? I really like that. Wonderful words to begin a new day. So on this September 1st, y'all, we are just about to finish up Job, Eof, chapter 40, reading through 42. And the Lord has showed up to speak. Let me tell you, that's got everybody quiet. What we're just saying, be still. <laughs> it's very appropriate. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? He who rebukes God, let him answer it. And then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yes, twice. 
but I will proceed no further. And then the Lord answered Job, out of the whirlwind. Can you imagine that? I mean, picture this, a whirlwind. Have you ever tried to drive through a whirlwind or stand or walk through one or see one from the distance? And imagine God is speaking out of it. Wow. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, and I love this. This is a sentence that needs to be spoken a lot today. Now prepare yourself like a man. And that's what we need, some righteous, upstanding men, don't we? Men, stand up. You are made in the image of God, and he will bless you for it. Protect and be the head of your home. Do a good job at work. I, the list is endless, isn't it? Imagine that. That's how God starts out. Prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Would you indeed annul my judgment? Would you, and the, the, here, listen to this one. This is what's happening all the time. Would you condemn me that you may be justified? Oh, isn't that what's happening? Oh, we will just excuse God, lie about God, shove him out of every area of life so that we can justify ourselves, which is mostly sin. Would you condemn me? that you may be justified? Have you an arm like God? Or can you thunder with a voice like his? Then adorn yourself with majesty and splendor. Imagine that. I mean, he's not really just scolding him. He says, then adorn yourself with majesty and splendor and array yourself with glory and beauty. Disperse the rage of your wrath. Look on everyone who is proud and humble him. Look on everyone who is proud and bring him low. A commission. Tread down the wicked in their place. There you go. Tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together. Bind their faces in hidden darkness. And then I will also confess to you that your own right hand can save you. Look now at the behemoth. And I love this. Which I made along with you. <laughs> That's rather humbling, isn't it? Listen, I was making some of these great big huge animals about the same time I was considering you. He eats grass like an ox. See now, his strength is in his hips. And oh, check out Kathy's graphic, graphics. She has some beautiful ones of these, these creatures that we are going to mention. And his power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like beams of bronze. His ribs like bars of iron. He is the first of the ways of God. Only he who made him can bring near his sword. Surely the mountains yield food for him, and all the beasts of the field play there. He lies under the lotus trees. In a covert of reeds and marsh, the lotus trees cover him with their shade. The willows by the brook surround him. Indeed, the river may rage, yet he is not disturbed. I mean, imagine, God just told us what was in his heart and his thoughts when he made him. He moves his tail like a cedar. He made one that would move like a cedar. I find this really exciting. 
Indeed, the river may rage, yet he is not disturbed. He is confident, though the Jordan gushes into his mouth, though he takes it in his eyes, or one pierces his nose with a snare. Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook? Or snare his tongue with a line which you lower? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we can't. Can you put a reed through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as with a bird? Or will you leash him for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet of him? Will they apportion him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons? Or his head with fishing spears? Lay your hand on him. <laughs> Remember the battle. Never do it again. I'm sure we wouldn't. I wouldn't lay my hand on it to start with. Indeed, any hope of overcoming him is false. Shall one not be overwhelmed at the sight of him? Check out Kathy's graphics. Very imposing graphic. No one is so fierce that he would dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. Let that sink in a minute. Everything under heaven is mine. I will not conceal his limbs, his mighty power, or his graceful proportions. Who can remove his outer coat? Who can approach him with a double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face with his terrible teeth all around? Good morning, John. His rows of scales are his pride, shut up tightly as with a seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. Well, we're talking, we're hearing from the one who made him. I mean, can't you just hear God's thoughts? Well, I'm going to. I'm going to do these scales so tight here that air can't even come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together and cannot be parted. His sneezings flash forth light. I can't imagine being in the presence of that creature when he sneezed. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lights. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke goes out of his nostrils as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. His breath kindles coals. How about that one? His breath kindles coals. And a flame goes out of his mouth. I don't know what all the fuss is about that's going on out there, but I hope somebody gets it corrected because it's taking your attention away from a very important part of scripture. So Lord, help whoever needs to know how to click something or do something. Strength dwells in his neck and sorrow dances before him. The folds of his flesh are joined together. They are firm on him and cannot be moved. His heart is as hard as stone. Wow. Even as hard 
as the lower millstone. When he raises himself up, the mighty are afraid. Because of his crashings, they are beside themselves. Imagine that. Though the sword reaches him, it cannot avail. Nor does spear or dart or javelin. He regards iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones become like stubble to him. <laughs> I mean, this creature is impenetrable. Darts are regarded as straw. He laughs at the th threat of javelins. His undersides are like sharp potsherds. He spreads pointed marks in the mire. He makes the deep boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. He leaves a shining wake behind him. One would think the deep had white hair. On earth there is nothing like him, which is made without fear. He beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. And we move along to the 42nd chapter of Job. Eov. <clears throat> By now, don't you think they're all trembling? I have a notion to tremble. And then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything. And and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand. Things too, too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you and you shall answer me. And I bet he was trembling. What am I going to answer, right? I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And so it was. After the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Elipaz, the Temanite, my wrath is aroused against you and your two friends. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. How about that? Now, therefore, take for yourself seven bulls and seven rams, Go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Wow. I mean, God repeats that, okay? Listen up when he repeats something. So Elipaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Naamathite, went and did as the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Ah, oh, did you catch that? There's a beautiful connection there. That really jumped off the page. I'm going to read that again. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those 
who had been his acquaintances before, came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one <clears throat> gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. How about that? God, I, I don't want to say replaced because nobody can really be replaced, but he added to him what he lost. I mean, that just, that just touches me. And he called the name of the first Jeminah, the name of the second Kesiah, and the name of the third Karen. Hapuch. In all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their fathers gave them an inheritance among their brothers. And I wrote down what those names mean. We don't have time to do all that, but I encourage you to look it up. Very interesting what those names mean. After this, Job lived 140 years. Imagine that. After this, Job lived 140 years. Ah, our Scott is here. Scott, please give us, give us a little something on Job here before we leave. Something that we might not know. That would be awesome. After this, Job lived 140 years and he saw his children and his grandchildren for four generations. Isn't that awesome? So Job died old and full of years. And I have down here, and you must have given it to me, Scott. Job means persecuted, hated. In Hebrew. Am I correct? And there we leave off with this magnificent book. Tomorrow we will begin Ecclesiastes. And we move along now to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We already began, so we will pick up with verse 11. 2 Corinthians 5, 11. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. How about that statement right after finishing up Job here? <laughs> the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. But we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your consciences. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. See, he had a reason for saying that. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. 
Therefore, here it is. Here it is. You're familiar with these words, but let's refresh them today. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. When you turn that calendar today, or it flips to September on your phone, however you do it, let all the heart heartaches of August go. It's a brand new month. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, just think about that. What all that, that, that's a mighty word there that encompasses many, many things, many ways, reconciliation, the ministry of it. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us, now get this, don't let this go by you, has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Oh, he will give us just the right word when it's needed, either, either for ourselves or for someone else. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who, know no, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Just think that through. That is love. That is really, that, that's love. That, that, that's love beyond any other way that we have known that kind of love. No one can give you that kind of love. No one else is going to die for you. No one else needs to die for you. Christ has done it. It's Finished. He cried, it is finished. That's the last thing he said from the cross. And then gave up his spirit. Himself gave it up. Oh, hallelujah, y'all. What a marvelous passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We move right along to Psalm 45. Psalm 45, it says here for me, a contemplation of the sons of Korah. And it was given to the chief musician, and he set it to a tune that they called the lilies. And it's called a song of love. Psalm 45. My heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, with your glory and your majesty. And in your majesty, ride prosperously because of truth, humility, and righteousness and your right hand shall teach you awesome things your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies the peoples fall under you your throne O god is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter 
of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. All your garments are scented with myrrh and aloes and cassia. Out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad, king's daughters are among your honorable women. At your right hand stands the queen in gold from Ophir. Listen, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people also and your father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. And the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will seek your favor. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. The virgins, her companions who follow her, shall be brought to you with gladness and rejoicing they shall be brought. They shall enter the king's palace. Instead of your fathers shall be your sons, whom you shall make princes in all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the people shall praise you forever and ever. Oh my, are those not glorious words? Wow. All right, my dear brothers and sisters, we will wrap it up with Proverbs twenty-two fourteen. Proverbs twenty-two fourteen. <clears throat> this is a fierce word here. The mouth of an immoral woman is a deep pit. He who is abhorred by the Lord will fall there. Wow. Let's read that one again. The mouth of an immoral woman is a deep pit. He who is abhorred by the Lord will fall there. And tomorrow, from Solomon, we will begin Ecclesiastes, entitled The Preacher, The Teacher. Ecclesia is Greek for church or congregation. So let's wrap it up in prayer. <clears throat> and I thank each and every one of you for coming for letting yourself be guided by Holy Ghost, Rakakodesh, for letting him just illumine God's word for you. How wonderful is that? Father God, precious, precious Abba Father, creator of everything, as we've read, as we've heard your very own words, Lord, that you spoke to your servant Job how you described your creation. You are awesome. You are high and lifted up. And your train fills the temple. You are seated on that throne. Your wonderful son, Jesus, Yeshua, is seated at your right-hand side lifted high by you. How we worship you. How we worship you. You are alive. You hear us. You are with us. As tiny, small, as little human beings we are down here. 
You have told us that we are precious in your heart. We are so grateful, Lord. We come before you humbly and repentive. The sin around us is ever stinking in our presence. And we come to you with repentive hearts that you might forgive us and wash us individually clean and wash our nation, America, clean. We come before you, Lord. Thank you for sending Holy Spirit to us, our dearest friend on earth. We thank you for that, Lord. We hold up Israel. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. We hold up and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for your peace, precious city, city of God. O city, O city, O city of God, glorious things are spoken of you. Yes, you have spoken glorious things. You are bringing your people home from the four corners of the earth. Oh, that we should live today to see this glorious prophecy come to pass. Yes, bring them home, Lord. Help them to recreate a Jewish life in the land. Help them, Lord, to begin to learn Hebrew and, and all of the ways of Israel. Help them to find their place that you have for them. That Israel will be strengthened, not become more of a problem, but strengthened. Lord, I'd ask you would comfort those. Father, please comfort the little pregnant wife with her children, whose rabbi husband stabbed in the back 20 times, standing at a bus stop. Cold-blooded murder. Father, please comfort that little family. Please. Please, Lord. Help them all in Israel with their sorrow. Let your peace roll down the streets of Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, all of the areas, out in the highways and the byways, particularly, Lord, along the borders. Along the borders, Lord. Please, where the enemy stands and curses and hurls insults and rockets and fiery balls trying to burn houses and beautiful growing fields. Please, precious Lord, I pray to you today that your peace overshadow all of that, particularly, Lord, for the children. I'd ask, Lord, that your hand your hand would be upon each and every child in Israel. All of them, Lord, Israelis, Jews, Palestinians, all of them, Lord, everyone, all of the visitors, all of the visitors, Lord, please let your peace rule and reign today. Let it bring wisdom for Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, for the Knesset. Let it bring angels of protection around every IDF member. Station them, Lord, where you want them to be. Station them that they might rescue people. That their presence will put out peace as they are there. Father God, I hold up America to you. And I'd ask, Lord, that you would keep your anointing on 
President Donald J. Trump, that you would cause him today, Lord, to do your will, that he would be a comfort to all of the people he is going to see today. Let him be a comfort, Lord. Let him be an encourager. Give him your words, Lord. Not his words, but your words. Let his presence be an example of you. Help him, Lord. Help the administration. Help the governors. Help the mayors. Help peace. Your peace. We pray for peace for Jerusalem. We pray for peace for America. We pray for comfort, Lord. Those families that have lost loved ones. We pray for peace for those who have been paralyzed with fear for the attacks. We'd ask, Lord, you would take the spirits of hatred and bind them and cause many people, Lord, to be awakened by your Holy Spirit, to be drawn to you like you drew us, Lord. We were lost at one time and your Holy Ghost had a timing and a and a way of drawing us unto you. Please, Lord, do that for many more who are lost today, who do not know you. Father God, I pray since it's September 1, for this coming date of September 26th, called the return, when many who are called will come to Washington, D.C. bravely and be at the mall and repent for our sins in the nation. The many who will come and who will march with Franklin Graham from the Lincoln Center to the Capitol and then join in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this planned day. We thank you that it all is timed at a time of the Feast of Tabernacles and the Day of Atonement, that it is 40 days before the election, that it is the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus coming to discover America, that that nation might begin to find its purpose in you, of being a light to shine to the world. Lord, I'd ask that you would supply for ministries today <clears throat> all that they need, Lord, all the supplies, the plane tickets, all that they need to minister, to carry out the commission they feel you have given them. Please, Lord, loose all that they need. We will give you the praise and the honor and the glory in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our soon coming King. God bless you all with the Amen and the Amen. Have a beautiful day in the Lord. Bye-bye.